Hello, my loves. We are recording on a Monday, and I'm filling the Mondays today. Happy Monday, or Wednesday, I guess, right, right? now. Happy Wednesday for y'all. Happy hump day. Today is a very, I guess, weird day. We're going into, um, well, tonight for you guys is going to be the reunion episode. I posted a couple days ago about I had finally seen the reunion. It's fantastic. Absolutely amazing. I texted um, one of our executive producers and said, holy shit, it's phenomenal. And they replied, I know, and it doesn't even come close to reunion two and three. (gasps) I am so <laughs> excited to hear that because you know what I thought? I thought three reunions. Okay, so the first one's probably going to be a little slow and then number two is going to be crazy and then number three is going to be like the craziest. I was, I've watched tonight's episode like six times. Stop. Everyone is amazing. And like our side of the little chairs <laughs> is like on <laughs> fire. Like, I was just looking at our side. Like, we just m- missed Sheena. Like, it should have yeah. been those people and then us. Right. Those two people. The Toms. The two. Okay. And then when Sheena had to abort, then Raquel could have sat over there. Also, what comes out or what has come out by this time, the Randall Scandal documentary on Hulu. Mm-hmm. As of right now, by the time this airs, I will have seen it. I have not seen it yet. I am planning to go to Disneyland today with Sheena and Brock, Summer Moon, and my family. It's very, very strange. I don't know what it's going to be like. I never in a million years thought, you know, when I got with this person that there were going to be articles written about him and this, that, and the other. Um, I'm obviously eager to watch it nervous um and I still just have this feeling that we have not even you know scratched the surface yeah I saw the trailer I too have not watched it yet um I did see your mom and Easton are involved but I so you're not involved you weren't interviewed for this I was not interviewed for the documentary so what is that footage of you on the dock it they it looks like they licensed podcast um, got it okay podcast interviews and things like that which great I never shied away from what's going on I certainly cannot be silenced but I was not interviewed for this doc Easton and my mom were asked to do it and they felt compelled to and I'm really really proud of them I'm proud of every single person who participated in that documentary um I'm sad for anyone who decided to take money and be silent. But if you're listening to this, it is not too late. Yeah. Yeah. I am interested to watch the doc from what I see, what I've seen in the trailer and what I know. Um, I think this hopefully shows a part of that person. But it, in my opinion, does not even come close to showing the whole picture. Well, it's because of what you and I know. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? The horrific treatment of the assistants is so important it's all important it's all important yes it's all important exactly but what has yet to be exposed which you know i know the universe always reveals people's truths it would make you physically ill so enough Mm -hmm. on that um the documentary the randall scandal airs on hulu the new episode of vanderpump rules is tonight which is the reunion but let's talk Mm -hmm. for a sec Let's talk because I'm dying to hear your thoughts on the finale. Okay, so first I want to talk about this. I went to this Hot Wheels event with Jackson, Britt, Cruz, Sheena, and Brock. (laughs) Okay? No. No, I need to hear about this because I audibly (sighs) screamed at the video of Ocean. And she's not even in. She's in the background of a video. Lala's holding her on the red carpet. She has the biggest smile. And she's just waving <coughs> waving to her fans. She's a star. So people like Terry Crews, um, Anthony Anderson, all of these people who I grew up watching, who I'm like, oh, shit, you know? But then we're sitting at the tables inside of the event 
It's Sheena and Brock, me, the kids. They're coloring at these little tables. Jay Leno, motherfucking Jay Leno, walks up to the table, says hi to the group. When I tell you I could not form a sentence, I couldn't even form the word <laughs> hi. I just sat there with a like this awkward smile on my face like, holy but there, I talk about this a lot. There are very few celebrities on this planet where I become completely starstruck. One is Larry David. The other, Jay Leno. Um, I just couldn't even function. And Ocean looks up at him, waves high, and goes back to coloring. And I wanted to nudge her and be like, do you know who the fuck that is, Ocean? It's a fucking Jay Leno. This is like star-studded. Well, I was pretty shook by it. So what I saw on Instagram stories, though, I pictured it was taking place in like a, um, like where Ocean's birthday took place. So that's not accurate because it looked like a play area. I think they set it up that way. I'm not entirely Got sure it. what it was. Okay. Okay. But, but there was like a tiny little hangar type building. Got it. It was amazing. So that's what we did over the weekend. My mom was gone. In, she went to Utah for like a week. Way too long, I told her. Never again. I missed you. But Easton is officially living in L.A. So I got to hang out with him. He came to the event. He's been my little sidekick. Um, they that, are twins, by the way. I can't get over it. Easton and Ocean are twins. They're Did twins. you see? We took them to a pool party. Where was that? And then they had the same hair. They I had was the like, exact same hair, Easton and Ocean. Yeah. Sheena said... Because Jackson and Brittany, we were supposed to go over there on Sunday. They ended up canceling because they had date night on Saturday. They went to a Laker game. So cute. Loved it. They were hurting the next day. <laughs> Sheena calls me and is like, I did not stay in town to just sit at my house. So do you want to go to like a rooftop? And I'm like thinking that she has been home maybe 24 hours since her last trip. And I'm like, sure, bitch. We'll go to a rooftop. Where are you trying to go? She was like, Canopy Max works there. We're going. I'm like, kid-friendly, bitch. Rooftops usually aren't. She's like, yes. I get there. There's chicks shaking their ass. Very. There's other children. Uh, okay. It's a hotel. Okay. People okay. are taking their kids. But it's definitely like hip-hop music, which is totally up my alley. Ocean and ocean swimming. You know, she's just a well-rounded kid. So is Summer Moon. Yeah. They had the best day. But o Ocean and Easton are identical twins. They're twins. He's the cutest uncle ever I know but can I tell you now it's like at the Hot Wheel event we went up to the counter to get the gifts of course we got to get a goodie bag for of O course. and I told Easton because we were like can we keep it behind the counter until we leave and they're like sure whatever I told Easton I don't know about that what if they give it away I'm concerned right go back and get it <laughs> so he goes up there and he's and the guy says to him oh remember you your wife gave us the ticket oh. I'm like what is going on I cannot I cannot Jess. you're one of those couples that look like siblings but we're not a, we are siblings <laughs> no, no, no. you're like we're not that's hilarious that's just how it's gonna be but people I mean for people who don't know you which if you live under a rock you know my family is just a bunch of stars um I want to talk All about right. this that very very quickly Rachel Fuda from Real Housewives of New Jersey. She's new. It popped up on my freaking feed on Instagram. She took her family to SeaWorld and oh. it, I was like, no, no, no. Oh, you're in the public eye now. What are you doing at that place? Who is still fucking going to SeaWorld? Why is it still open? Very uneducated people. Very uneducated people. I hope none of of your friends oh, they that are never. hearing this would would no. I'm talking like your friends that are hearing this episode. Oh, right like now. my people, your people, your my people, people would ever go. And I don't think they would. I just don't see best. my fan base, my people Supporting. rolling up to be like Sea World of Orlando. Disgusting. Let's go. Disgusting. It's just so Rach, babe. I love you. I loved you and your family on this season, but. Come on, man. Did you DM her? No, oh, okay. I'm just going to do it publicly nope. instead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I also want to quickly slam Lenny Hockstein. Let's slam him. So there were a bunch of things posted on Mother's Day. Okay? Mm -hmm. And let me get to my... I took screenshots. 
Because this guy, oh my gosh, can I tell you? So I was scrolling through Hawks, Lenny Hogsign's page, and he takes ugly selfies and thinks he's hitting <laughs> right. It's like, stop! Jump it's, scare. How oh scary is that? I can't. It's the picture on his page where he is in a gray shirt and a hat, selfie style, with I voted. Proud of you for voting. Let's not discount that. I give credit where credit is due. And then he posts a picture of himself. He's going, he's going out for Mother's Day the, with his mom. His mom comments that she's so glad that Lenny has found someone that truly makes him happy. <gasps> and then goes on to say, so it says, so happy that you have found a wonderful girl next to you. That's from his mom. The girlfriend writes, can't wait to celebrate you tomorrow. Someone else comments and the mom responds, if you, if you know real Lisa, you will not support her. Okay, to the mom, fuck off. Yeah. We now know why Lenny's a narcissist. Yes. Because there's always one parent who is mm -hmm. that kind of like really fucks the kid up. Mm -hmm. It's just how it works. Science people. Call me Dr. Lala. <laughs> Science PhD. people. PhD. <laughs> just kidding. But I was like physically, I, I was disgusted by it. Lisa goes on to say like thank you to everyone who has um, supported me. A lot of things happen on Mother's Day to try and break me down. I'm lucky I have this platform. But I also looked at Lenny's page and he still has all of Lisa's pictures up. So it's classic narcissism. You keep Lisa's picture up because she brings you any sort of anything, mm -hmm. right? No one knows who the fuck you are without Lisa and then you got this girl who thinks like she's something special and she ain't. I'm humiliated for both of them. And also never did he did he say anything about the mother of his children on mother. You know what? It's better that he didn't. She his her name doesn't need to be anywhere in his mouth. No, anymore. I don't think so either. And yeah. also like I just feel bad because the new girlfriend thinks she's doing something and everyone's looking at her like we just feel bad that you have to fuck him. It's thirsty, it's humiliating, it's desperate, it's sad. There's so many Oh, just stay far away. From Lisa me. wins the game. And here's why yeah. she got the beautiful kids mm -hmm. and she doesn't ever have to. She doesn't have to be associated with him. Doesn't have to be linked to him. Doesn't have to claim that mm. this thing uh. that we're seeing in the <laughs> selfie. No. That's the best where you like. I got the kids who look like me. Yes. And you're over there thinking you're doing something. And we're all making fun of you. And you don't get it. You still continue to like think that people care about you. Mm -hmm. You're out, you're feeling yourself. And yeah, and the just... only thing that you're doing is giving us great content to drag <laughs> you with. Exactly. Can you guys tell I'm on a roll today? <laughs> I'm taking no prisoners on today's podcast. Okay? Give them Lala. Give them Lala. <laughs> All right, so I also want to talk about this because here's the thing. The finale episode that we watched, mm -hmm. we could talk about that for a hot minute, but I think I've said most of what I need to say. Okay. You guys all got to see it. So before we move on to that, I want to talk about this woman that I met. She, Her husband comes up to me and is like, hey, my wife, are you Lala from that show? And I said, yes. And he said, oh my gosh, my my wife... Um pointed you out and I was like there's no way that it's her the wife comes up and goes I can't believe it's you I used to watch that I used to watch Vanderpump Rules and a lot of other Bravo shows but I stopped when I noticed I was getting dumber okay okay first of all if I was not afraid of catching a case I would have body checked this hoe do we know who this is? Is this a public figure? Some random fucking woman oh okay some so this random isn't like eating a blue slushy at a, as a grown ass woman. Okay. Okay, judging you. Yeah. Why your tongue blue, bitch, in public? <laughs> you a grown up. You know? <laughs> blue tongue. <laughs> and so I decided to just, you know, ask around. Mm. Ask around. You know what type of person is watching Bravo? I went to the higher ups of Bravo actually to mm. ask this <laughs> question. And they said to me, Science based. <laughs> whenever something, <laughs> whenever I go to something, it, always it's science. I, th I think maybe she wears next amazing quote. shoes all the time. Science, science, facts. They said when they do things like you know the who tunes in to Bravo, what is like the fan base, the demographic. Yeah. 
Thank you. That's the word I was searching for. <laughs> demographic. I can't roll with me, you guys. There's a lot on my mind today. The most highly intelligent of people are tuning in to watch Bravo. You hear that? Y'all are geniuses. So you know what? You're right, because you a dumb bitch. So you wouldn't be watching Bravo, would you? What did she... I'm so confused, because this is the first time I'm hearing of this. Did she, like, laugh after... Was she trying to be funny with Lala? No, no laughter. You know what I said to her? I go, oh, you're missing out. Oh, good. It's like, the most epic of content. I watch not only Vanderpump Rules, which is killing it right now, by yeah. the way. Senators... <laughs> are talking about Vanderpump Rules. Well, then she goes to ask, well, let's be clear. So I kept this in my notes further down just so that it wasn't completely apparent where this woman came from because you know she's still a fan listening to this podcast (laughs) after she met me. It was in D.C. And she goes, what are you doing in D.C.? I go, I'm going to the White House Correspondents' Dinner. And she was like, oh, wow. Oh, she wasn't at the dinner. She was just random. Random person (laughs) on the freaking street eating a blue slushie. With a blue ass down. And the reason I ran into her was because I was also waiting at the ice cream truck. But I was getting a milk tea. Boba milk tea. While this woman's ordering blue slushies at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. I am shocked. And what? I met a real life troll. No, you did. I know. I was like, wow. I don't know if I should like punch you or if I should hug you for your honesty. Yeah. <laughs> Because usually when people troll me on gram, I'm like, you're the bitch who rolls up on me and is like, Lala, can I get a picture? 100%. And then tags me and I go in to look at it and the, the previous message is <laughs> calling me a home wrecking whore. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You just met one. Congrats. <laughs> Hopefully you never one. need another. I met one. I want to be where the people are. Poor child. I'll make you human for three days. Is that even possible? <laughs> Watch and you'll see. This Friday. Someday I'll be. Experience the motion picture event of the year. Disney's The Little Mermaid. Rated PG. Parental guidance suggested. In theaters Friday. Priceline presents... Go to your happy price. What's up? It's Kaylee Cuoco. When it comes to travel, we all have a happy place. You can see yourself already there. It's beautiful. It might be sunny and sandy for some, neon and urban for others, deserts or rainforests or hiking trails. With Priceline, you can get to your happy place for a happy price with deals you really can't find anywhere else. Like up to 60% off select hotels to Costa Rica or five-star hotels for two-star prices in Cabo. Go to Priceline.com and travel to your happy place for a happy price. All right, see ya. I'm off to Miami. No, actually, wow, look at that. No, I- I'm going to Hawaii now. Ooh, Cancun looks nice. You know what? Belize looks pretty nice this time of year. Or, mmm, Palm Springs. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Okay, let's jump into the episode, I have to say. Dana, and I have to give her credit for this, she made the comparison of Tom and Raquel as flubber. Oh, Raquel's flubber, and (laughs) Tom is Robin Williams. Except, like she said, Tom is not like some genius scientist who can turn flubber into a genius, who like... (laughs) Flubber turns into a boat, a plane, you know. He dances or he dances. dances. He dances. Yeah. So, but like, that's kind of the concept of their relationship, Tom and Raquel, without the genius behind it. So it's just tragic. Oh my God, that's a So good. basically, he just has a bunch of slime in his hand. <laughs> Doesn't know what to do with it. Oh, that's a good, who said that? Dana? Dana. Dana. Was, Dana's so funny to watch the episodes with. Really? Yeah, she's the one that was like, Barnacle! Oh! <laughs> um, The episode. So it starts off with Tom coming in. Well, no, it starts off with them saying, are we ready to talk about this? And the opening, can we talk about that? Watch what happens live. So good. That opening was amazing. And why did they, I mean, they used that opening because it broke that night. It broke that night. And I posted the text message that I had with Katie from that night 
Because, yes. you know, I love credit. There's nothing I love more than credit. So I'm being like, you knew it first. And me puff up my chest. Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker, I did. Because you fucking speak your mind. You say these things and people go, you are crazy, Lala. And then it happens. The only person who never thinks I'm crazy is Katie. Yeah. What is that? Because she's saying the same thing. Because she's saying the same thing <laughs> yeah. that I'm saying. Like, she totally is on my same page. So the reason I posted it was because... The fact that we were speaking this into the universe. Yeah. We were speaking this into the universe, and that's why you guys need to start speaking things that you want could into you, the universe. Could you send me that? Because we're going to post it as part of today's episode. Yes. Photos. Thank you. So the night of Watch Robin's Live with Raquel and Sheena. Katie says, OMG, wait till the BFF game. I said, yo, see? And she said, did you get to that part? I said, where Raquel says Sandoval. Yup. And Sheena is like, what? And Raquel said, and Raquel says a lot. And I said, yeah, I agree. It confirms everything. That night, phone falls out the pocket or whatever. And Ariana decides to go through it. So cut to Tom and Ariana. That scene was like so heartbreaking. heartbreaking. And I saw on Hello, Hello, by Wig, Hello Drama or okay. something that they had a psychologist watched that scene and he goes I'm really funny about my diagnosing people from afar mm -hmm. but what I'm seeing in the scene this is a classic narcissist he is walking into the room acting like he owns the place filling up the coffee acting like it's an uncomfortable situation because Ariana is making it uncomfortable mm -hmm. she obviously drags him through the mud I don't know that I could have even been in the same house. Really? With that person. I don't think I could have filmed a scene. I thought the way that she held it together, saying you go to couples therapy and we could have. There's something that I admire about a woman who can sit down with someone who did her as dirty as Sandoval did and have a conversation that's not only productive, but also cuts the other person very deep. For me, when I was done dirty like that, there was no need – well, the environment was very toxic. There was no conversation that needed to be had. I just was slinging insults until I had to go into, like, I'm going to pretend everything's normal. But I I don't think I could have – like, when she said, that's why you go to couples therapy together, and we could have. At the very end of the conversation, she says, I would have followed you anywhere. Mm. Like, even now I have, I have chills because it's – like how, still, how could this, how could you allow this to happen? I have a question for you on this. So obviously when you see this situation and you say, I couldn't have done that, you compare to what you went through. But I wonder if you could have done that and been in the house, just me knowing you and like, I wonder if you could have done that if, when, when, it happened with you and you were done dirty. Very quickly, you found out there were victims. The things that we know. Y yes. Not with, just the cheating, is that what yeah, you're saying? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. With, with, with Tom and Raquel, Ariana, at the time, we don't know, I'm just saying, what it seemed is Ariana, in her eyes, Raquel wasn't a victim, in many people's eyes. It was a relationship. So the, it was a cheating and it was like an isolated incident. And that's why Ariana could talk to him and be like, I would have followed you anywhere. We could have gone to therapy. With you, I almost think it was, I mean, it was like you had a gut feeling and then quickly you were getting all these DMs that same night that the photo came out. Well, of course you're not going to stay and talk to someone. No, absolutely. Yeah. Just so I can relate to Ariana only about the cheating aspect. Yeah. And when I say that Sandoval is like that person, I'm only talking about that type of life where you're incapable of mm. love and mm -hmm. you're addicted to the newness and an energy source. Right. Anything else is, with my situation, is so dark and heinous and has yet to be revealed. And I'm okay with that because mm -hmm. it will be revealed when it needs to, when, when the time comes. Right? Yeah. There's no article, no documentary that has revealed the shit that is going on behind the scenes. So it's hard for me to separate the two and be like, I can relate to you in the cheating sense, but I've tried. 
Yeah. And maybe you're right. Maybe I could have had that type of conversation. But I'm I'm so excited for you guys to see this reunion. Yeah. I'm so freaking excited. In fact, my mind is jumping to like I can't wait to break down the reunion. But you were now going back to what you were saying. In that moment, heartbreaking chill. She says I would have followed you anywhere. I got the tears in my eyes because that was you know, bravo to Ariana for allowing the cameras to film that, for opening up, for being vulnerable. She was like the definition of poised. She got her point across, but she also was vulnerable. And to mm-hmm. me, that would have been hard. I would have been like, coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. You You're wouldn't like, have been able to get a word no, in. No, I wouldn't have said I would have followed you anywhere. I would have been like, yeah, I would have been out in a month anyway, bitch. Like, I would have, you know. Right. There was one thing that... But the thing about Tom, when she said, when are you going to see her next? Are you going to see her tonight? Are you going to kiss? And he goes, I'm going to see her tomorrow. And she says, you could have just said no. I had a powerful fucking moment. Mm. But also it's like, he's being honest. Yeah. You want him to For say the, no and then, and then <laughs> go and, and see her and then he just continues the lies like he he had to be honest number one because we're gonna find out because yeah that scene with Raquel and Tom airs yeah can we just talk about that yeah because I think in that moment you're talking about he was honest because the cameras were there what a wild time to decide to be honest now seven months later well right yes that's why I didn't want to say it I it was like an honest moment for him because it's like you knew that we had to film with (laughs) we were gonna find out you don't want to lie when you know that you're going to be found out shortly after. Yes. Um, that scene was so uncomfortable. Yeah. Them not kissing due to cameras being there. Them, it's like, oh, are you wanting everyone to look at you? Like, that's so nice of you guys to not rub it in her face. Can I bring this up because I'm not on the show? Yeah. And I got to give credit to the comments by Celeb Girl, comments by Bravo Girls, because they brought this up. And I was like, oh, my God, that's a great fucking point. Yes, there was that moment they were saying this is so weird. But I wonder if, yeah, it's weird because cameras are there. But it's crew. You guys have, that's crew that like you guys get close with. The people behind the camera, the people holding the boom mic. Mm -hmm. Those people you're like shooting the shit with. And that's like family almost and all of a sudden for the first time ever after years of seeing Tom and Ariana kiss and do their thing now it's like oh my god that gave me chills just yes and they said that first so I do give them I do want to give them credit uh Isabel and uh Julie but I was like holy shit that's such a great point because even when they're here with you at the office and I'm standing off to the side or whatever I shoot the shit with them and I'm like hey guys what's up like so what do family. you think about that? Do you think there was some, that's a great point? I think there were definitely tears on the side of the crew when they filmed the Sandoval and Ariana, or yeah, Sandoval mm-hmm. and Ariana scene. I think it was, I'm sure, extremely uncomfortable to walk in and watch Sandoval grabbing Raquel's face. And I have to imagine that it was very hard for Sandoval and Raquel to sit there, you know, it's almost like you're being publicly shamed. These people are going to film you. And they're also who you've been lying to this entire time. Yeah. It's like, I, I think it would have been very awkward. And the smile. And by the way, I get it. Like when people feel uncomfortable. When I feel uncomfortable, I make sex jokes. Mm. <laughs> it's really freaking awkward. Like I do uh, that. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. But I make them when I don't feel awkward, too. Okay. That's why I think – I'm like, I'm going to try to seem like myself by cracking, like, a sexual joke, I guess. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> uh, do you know if – Oh, this well, is what I was yes, going to say is say Raquel it. was laughing. And yes. maybe when she gets really uncomfortable or nervous, because if you watch her, she laughs before she cries. Mm-hmm. Didn't see her cry in this scene. Only laugh. And say this turned out so terribly wrong. Yes. How did you think it was? I just want to know what, how did you think that it was going to turn out? I would love to ask her that question. How did you envision this going down in your mind without being coached by Sandoval? How did you think this was going to turn out? Well, apparently, and I don't know, I think I saw 
Ariana comment or there's something it, it's on socials, but there was an elaborate plan to, but, but so I don't know. It's just the, it's so many mixed feelings because there was some elaborate plan that like Sandoval and Raquel had to like tell her before the reunion. But I'm just, I don't know. I don't but know. But either how. way, it would have turned yeah. out the same way. You still carried on an affair behind her back. So right. what I want to know is. Did, did it turn out terribly wrong because she saw an intimate video of the two of you? Is that the only thing that went wrong in this situation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The moment that she started catching feelings for him. And by the way, Tom is at fault too. But again, I'm a man hater and I expect men to do fucked up shit. I don't expect my girlfriends to do fucked up shit. You should have sat down with Ariana said, you are one of my closest friends and I love you. I am catching feelings for Tom and I think he is catching feelings for me as well. Have the conversation. Because at that point in time, nothing could have happened. It could have been just texting, right? Mm -hmm. And you crossed a line there. But at least you could say, I'm going to go my separate way with you as a friend. Mm -hmm. You and Tom do whatever you need to do. I'm going to back off of him as well. But just know, like if you guys broke up, I would be interested in seeing him. Yes, and let me make myself clear. I do not think in that elaborate plan, I do not think in any world they were going to come forward and admit to cheating. I think what you said, they were going to break up and then, oh, oh, a happenstance, a few weeks later, Tom, Sandoval, and Raquel would have started seeing each other and they would have been like, you know, we just fell into it. I don't think in any world there would have ever been admission of cheating if it wasn't found out. I agree. And can I tell you, Tom Sandoval has blocked me on Instagram. No. <laughs> yeah. Stop. I told my mom that last night. I was like, hold on. Someone's trying to send me something. And this person either has me blocked or I have them blocked. And so I looked. I'm like, it It was the girl saying that Tom is a narcissist and sent me a post. So I look at my mom's phone. She's very much not blocked. And I'm very much blocked. Are you blocked, Jess? Wait. And she goes, that is so rude. And I said, I would block me too. If he was trolling me every single day. I would most likely click the block button. Wait, this can't be real. He Does he even know to block me? Because I'm blocked. Well, I think my beauty page is blocked too. Who would even... That's so extra. That's when you know that like Lala is calling out your bullshit. Because there's only one other person, you know who, mm-hmm. that has blocked even my like business accounts. <laughs> Wait, Tom Sandoval and the most extras. Is that's that... It. That's it. Is that's, that his page? No, that's the band's page. Oh, then he blocked me. And also, not me going to the baby page to see if he blocked them. He could have. He did. Check. He did he? Yes. <laughs> me creeping from the baby Instagram. Um, <laughs> no. What? I have to say, I do not blame him. It's constant for me. It- I tried to warn everybody I'm not being quiet until the season 10 wraps. When season 10 wraps, I'll fully let it go. Because I'm also getting really sick of it. Yeah. But clearly not enough to stop. Well, it's still, yes, it's, there's a lot to discuss. Yeah, but I think that the mind-blowing factor of it is, like, that it happened is over. Now we all want to see the slicing. And the fallout. And I'm dying. That's what I want to see. The reunions. Like, I can't even wait. I can't, and, and you know what I thought, too? So on the finale episode, I told Kyle, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I love every time I see Lala on the screen, obviously. I told Kyle, I said, oh, man, I wish she was in this episode more. And he said, from what it sounds like, her reunion is going to, the reunion, her in the reunion is going to make up for. Wait, Kyle <laughs> said from what it sounds like? From what it sounds uh, everybody Kyle- at Kyle's gym talks about it. He's like, they come up to me and they go, oh my God. And Kyle's like, I don't know. I have no idea. I will say I was a Lala stan at this fucking reunion, <laughs> this this episode that I watched. I cannot even wait. I was like, I want to be as cool as that person on the TV. <laughs> I'm not it's, as cool. Just like you, chilling. Yeah, but no, you are. It's good you can separate though. It's not like you're, I don't know. I just can't wait to see it. You put my extensions in and put me in a sequin cheetah dress and... (laughs) (laughs) What I love is that you have the mouth for all of us. I don't have to I don't have to sit here and say my thoughts on Instagram about Sandoval because Lala's going to do that for me at the reunion. Well, I had a heyday. 
This episode is brought to you by the new Disney Plus original series, American Born Chinese, which tells the story of Jin Wang, an average teenager dealing with the ups and downs of high school, only to find himself entangled in a battle with Chinese mythological gods. Based on the graphic novel by Jin Luen Yang, the series explores culture, identity, and acceptance through the lens of adolescence. American Born Chinese, premiering May 24, exclusively on Disney Plus. We're all juggling life, a career, and trying to build a little bit of wealth. The Brown Ambition Podcast with host Mandy and Tiffany the Budget Nista can help. How can I protect myself from identity theft? I think the first thing is to be aware of what phishing attempts look like. So check that email address. But now it's like coming to your text. Do you get phishing texts now? Girl, yes. Talking about this, the IRS. I'm like, girl, so you texting yes. now? Or like, with your or- lack of funding? <laughs> Brown Ambition. Wherever you listen. The one thing I did watch Raquel say was basically if you could do this to Ariana, what makes me think you couldn't do that to me? Oh my God. Immediately. Okay. It's like, yes, you're on the right track. Your mind in this very moment is working. Your heart is fucking you up right now. Mm. I always say the mind will fuck you over. Your heart will definitely mislead you. The only thing that will not is your gut. When she said that, I knew her gut and her mind were communicating with each other, which is exactly how it should work. But her heart is going to overpower and think that there is something special about her when there's not. I hate to break it down for all of us. We are all very special. But the only person that can determine that in a relationship whether they're not going to fuck around on you or not. That's why you got to feel special with or without the person. They're the ones that are going to determine if you're special enough not to cheat on. And when I say special enough, it means they're either a narcissistic fuck or they're not. Chances are leopards ain't changing their spots. So yes, if he could do this to Ariana, Raquel, he is most definitely going to do it to you. And he's going to do it to that person and the next person and the next person. Yes. That's just how it works. But in that moment, I was like, yes, go with this. Go with this. Tell him, you know what? We just blew our lives up. I think I'm going to choose me now. I'm going to need you to leave. Agreed. And I'm going to deal with the fallout on my own. Yes. And on that, I want to cut back to the episode. But on that, just two rumors out right now. Number one, that they broke up. Number two, that Raquel is hiding out because she's pregnant. Well, what are your thoughts on both? Someone sent a blind to me today And it said, this certain bar girl was pregnant and now she is not. Now, people are thinking that that is Raquel. I'm not even going to touch on that because, number one, very sensitive topic. Number two, I have been pregnant, obviously. I was fortunate enough to have a healthy child which is all you really care about. You don't give a damn about what they look like. You don't give a damn if it's a boy or a girl. All you care about in that moment is, I need this baby to come out healthy, right? Mm -hmm. So if that is true, heart completely breaks for her, no matter what the situation with Scandival was, is. I don't know. If it's not true, thank God. Right? Mm -hmm. That's where I, I know I seem like a cold hearted bitch. I can be, I can be a fucking ice queen. When it comes to that, I'm not fucking around. People can say, you know, oh, this is where, this is another avenue that she's taking to play the victim. I'm not even going there. That is not for anybody to decide or judge. If that is true and that's what she comes out and says and confirms it, Like, I will definitely, my heart will be broken for her. Yeah. So I'm going to leave that at that. What about them breaking up? Because my thought, and I told you this initially. Now, I don't know. I've been wrong on so many things. 90% of the things, I guess, are wrong. But I predicted, I said, Sandoval's a narcissist. I don't think by season 11 filming, I think he's walking in to an important event hand in hand with the brand new chick. And that's unfortunate. And I don't think Raquel will have seen it coming 
I think they will have just, what I think is that maybe Raquel maybe went off to work on herself. I think Sandoval continued his band thing. I think he's so full of himself that he probably started hooking up with chicks. 100%. I think that she realized, holy shit, this guy is a narcissist and crazy. I'm distancing myself or whatever. They broke up, but that was my prediction. So when I did see the rumors, they split up. I'm like, yeah, that's, yes, of course they did. But what do you think? Um, I think it was like some sort of publicity stunt. It okay. just didn't make any sense. Like today is right. the day that you come out with this. Today is the day that we're going to announce that we've s- split. The day of the finale. Yeah. Right. Like tell me you want more attention without telling me you want more attention. Yeah. And I did see photos of, of Sandoval shopping with the, a blonde. Did you see it? Sunglasses, hat on. I'll show you later. Oh my it's God. It's her. She's trying on uh outfit. Nobody knows who she is. She oh, looks- and he's in the background. Yep. And people are like, that's not him, that's not him, but like same hat, like, you know. It didn't look like him to me. Really? No. Okay. But he also has lost a lot of weight. Oh, that's not the best sign, but yeah. No, he looks very, very unwell. Maybe it's the, I'm sure it's the stress. Yeah. But he doesn't, he's not looking Mm -hmm. good. Well, no matter what, I always hope. 99% 99% if, of people If he walks in with a new chick, yeah. she dodged a huge bullet. Who? Raquel. Oh, Raquel, but not this new chick. No, this new chick is an idiot. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. And the girl that he brings, I'm yeah. fair warning, I'm trolling you. Yeah, I mean, come on. Fair warning. And chances are you a fan. Yes. And chances are you love you some Lala and you think that you're going to go toes and it's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. You dogging this <laughs> Check who would doesn't be even like, exist. Who doesn't even exist? <laughs> I'm talking to someone. I've this pretend girl. a woman in my mind, and I'm coming for her. Doesn't even exist, y'all. Is her dream. She's like, let me get on that show. Let me walk hand in hand in with Sandoval, and then let me have Lala done. Well, because you know that this girl is thinking she's doing something. Um, you know, yes, and she probably is a fan of you know that band, which is also embarrassing. I mean, come on. It's all just embarrassing. Yeah. Like for Ariana, it's like I looked at her and I was like, this is so sweet because she knows he sucks and she's still (laughs) supporting. Oh, my God. I know. You know, it's kind of like where I can relate. It's like I knew that person's movie sucked, but like I was riding with you anyway. (laughs) Yeah. That's when you know you got a fucking good one. (laughs) And you know, know you got Good for you guys. Good for you guys because I am not. Thank God. We did charity work for a lifetime with those fucking clowns. (laughs) Because I would have been like, oh, I support your drive. And that's, I would I would have left it at that. I wouldn't have complimented the movies. I wouldn't have complimented the music. I never complimented any of it <laughs> because I can't lie. I'm incapable of lying. You're like, it's so. But that's when it went left. Did you notice? Yeah. When you stop stroking the ego, it goes left. And without some lubrication, AKA Mm -hmm. alcohol, I'm not complimenting you. I'm not having sex with you. I'm not blowing you because I see things for exactly what they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Damn it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Without the vodka blinders on, man, life is rough. But life's rougher with it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is. It's a lot. I know we got off on a tangent, but I did want to know what you thought of those rumors. Can you tell us what you thought about the Raquel smiling in the blue dress? Because I know you said... Sickening. Okay, good. We watched her cry throughout the season about aging out of pageants. We watched her make a lot of uncomfortable... Which, by the way, would have won her the season. I stand by that. You would have had the audience so freaking torn about how they felt about her. And the sand, or the Schwartz and Katie situation. Mm-hmm. But you felt for her. Right. But now knowing what we know, you go back and watch those where she's crying and saying she's making up for lost time and she doesn't care about her reputation anymore. It's very uncomfortable. Then you watch her talking about Sandoval and she wanted to know what it was like to have sex with someone that she loved. And by the way, take it, take out the Sandoval thing because that's disgusting. It's disgusting that you're like grinning through this when Ariana was your best friend confiding in you about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Take out the sand of all, let's just say in general, she wanted to know what it was like to have sex with someone who she actually loved. I relate to that. There's something about when you decide to put your blinders on and everything is amazing at the beginning and then you kind of sink into a relationship and you're like, wow, I actually really, really hate this. 
but it's being overcome by what I think is just normal and I chose this life and these are the repercussions of choosing this life and I'm not going out without a fight. So I did understand that aspect of it. Okay. You know, like for me, I still don't know. Actually, that's a lie. I do know what it is like to have sex with someone who you love deeply. Okay. My high school sweetheart, still to this day, how sad is this? Hmm. This is so sad that my high school relationship was the most healthy and fulfilling relationship that I have ever been in. See, I don't think that's sad. Because then you let the world start clouding certain judgments and expectations and you get older and you're like, my life, you're thinking, no, I think that's I think that's normal. And I think a lot of people would be in that same boat. I don't know that that is normal for a 32-year-old with a child to who was engaged to be like, my most productive and healthy relationship happened when I was 17 to 20. Mm-hmm. Like... That seems weird to me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I know that, look, you, you're in high school and your heart is open and you're just, there's so much innocence and love there. And like I said, then you start, you kind of become an adult and you start thinking, well, what's my life going to look like? And mm. I think some things cloud that. You start to go for men that, and I'm not saying you, I'm just saying the general you, because I remember myself, I start to go for men that, oh, you got a number one fucking song on the radio. Like, that's my no, number I, one thing. No, you know? I like, definitely relate to that. And by the way, there's a lot of other, like people who have trolled me before saying, like, you went for homeboy because of the money, but then I show up with someone who maybe doesn't have that and they're the same people telling me that, you know, he's just a broke loser. Like, whoever it may be. Whoever it may be where I'm like, this guy's fine, I'm bringing him around, post a picture, whatever, and they're the same people that are saying that, like, you cannot win the game. No matter who you get with, there's always going to be a reason. And here's the deal. If a chick is going for a dude because of his money and she's young and hot – the dude's going for her because she's young and hot. Yes. So there, there's an, a transaction happening. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You can't hate the girl for going for money because she's also being used for her bomb ass body. Yes. And face. Yes. <laughs> you know? Exactly. But I get also, but there, it's like the whole give and take thing. And that's why you're lucky when you come across someone who like has everything is good and is good for your soul. But I think my I am at myself a 21 and I'm like... Yeah, maybe he's not the best looking, but he's successful in music. And you know what? I got to know him and I'm like, oh, he really cares for me and he really takes care of me. So I'm like, I'm like trading things off. And then I finally get in like the space where I'm like, he's, and then I just kind of like see it or I You and I are also better. in a strange world though. I know, that's true. We're not it's living not. in freaking Idaho. Yeah. And we met a guy bowling. Yeah. <laughs> You know, everyone we come in contact with, I've been in this town for a while, and everyone you come in contact with is out here trying to do something. Yeah. We're all in the same industry. Some people are higher up than others. Mm -hmm. But yes, you do start when you think about your future. Back then, when I was in high school, it's like, I live at my mama's house. It's big and nice. My mom's letting me use the car. That's what I'm saying. And it's like, I got a little modeling job and they're paying me $500. (laughs) I'm rich. (laughs) I mean, that's amazing for high school. Are you so much money? So much money. I remember looking at my Chase account in high school and I had like $2,300 and I was like, I'm I'm (laughs) balling. And then it's, I'm about to graduate and I look at rent and it's like 3,000 a month. I'm like, oh shit. (laughs) Like, well, time to pick up another job. Yeah. Like, oh, this is where I start working a nine to five <laughs> before I make the move. But you're right. You do start when you get older looking at, okay, does this person have a good job? Mm. Does this is this person able to handle finances properly? I did not go that deep with mine. <laughs> All I knew was that I was handling my finances properly. So yes, I yes. do totally get what you're saying. There was innocence and I lost my virginity to this person as well. That's huge huge that's huge for a lot of people that's huge well I feel like it actually set up a healthy sex life for me going forward oh that's also huge because a lot of times it's the opposite way it's the opposite you get drunk you have a one-night stand you lose your virginity oh fuck yeah 
Yes, right? Exactly. I've heard a lot of people. I mean, my best friend lost her virginity at the age of 22 to an A-list celebrity who we see all the fucking time. And I knew that was a bad idea. Yeah. I told her, do not sleep with him. Yeah. And she did. Did she, though, because she thought yes. she, it was different? Yes. Oh. Don't we all? We all think we're the special one. Yeah. And guess what? We're all the special ones. Every one of us. But to our, but in, with our, how do I word it? With ourselves and not having a man validate that we're the special one. Let's just know we're the special one. And it doesn't matter if this guy, like full circle back to Raquel. Know you're special, love yourself. But you, it's like she needed Sandoval to validate that for her. To be like, well, he chose, he's choosing me. So that means I'm special. It's a very unhealthy way to think. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I've never felt that way. Yeah. In high school, we were all competing for the attention of a dude. Yeah. And if there's one thing I can teach Ocean, it's to know when a dude just fucking sucks and never compete with another chick for a dude. We can compete in soccer games. We can compete in dance. We can compete for jobs. Yeah. When it comes to a fucking person, you don't compete for people. No, you're a gift and they are lucky to for you to allow them your time well, i've always said i am a fine wine baby yeah <laughs> so. you better come in here and you know like i'm top fucking shelf yes yes not everybody just gets to enjoy this luxury <laughs> and i feel that way about ocean yeah. i'm like don't step in here and ask me about my kid you don't know shit about her yeah <laughs> Don't text me and be like, how's your daughter? Fuck you. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Too daughter, fuck you. <laughs> Don't ever. <laughs> Don't you dare. Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you dare call her O. You don't know her. <laughs> Oh, my God. And chances are you never will because we could have a relationship go on for a 100 years and you will always live over there and I will always live over here because I just learned from Tina Swithin that there was a custody case. This woman could not stand men, couldn't find a good dude, got a sperm donor, had a baby, found a great guy, integrated him into their lives. He, it didn't work out. He goes into the court, asks for 50-50 custody, and is granted it. <gasps> so I was talking to Tina Swithin and telling her, you know, I think I'm moving forward with a, sp a sperm donor this summer. And she said, I just want you to be careful. Anyone, any man who comes into your life, you never allow him to be a part of the routine. You never share the same house. He can sleep over, but he always got to have his own place. And he doesn't take her to school. He doesn't pick her up from anything. He doesn't make her breakfast. So then it just adds another set of things on to me like that I'm going to avoid. So now I th That's insane. Yeah. I thought that's why people got sperm donors was because they were like, well, sh they'll always be mine and I don't have to share. I don't have to deal. But that's not true. No, it's not true. And 50-50 custody is very different than visitation. Yeah. You know, I don't necessarily know that this mom was going and being like, he can never see her ever again in his life. But to have to share my child... 50% of the time when she comes from a sperm donor yeah, is insanity. So that happened. Anyway, I also want to talk about the very end of the episode. Yes. yes. Schwartz comes to the rooftop. I used to have a bar that served drinks. Yeah, we're currently trying to blow that up for you. <laughs> Send it to Daryl <laughs> appearance, to by the way. Bravo. So a lot of people... I think it was you and the merch team that Plan were telling of all. me. Yeah, planned of all. I was like, wait, am I am I now directly associated with Sandoval? Well, what were the people saying? They were like The people were like, there's no way that this wasn't planned. How the fuck does she already have the sweatshirt on? And I just want to let you know. How would I plan send it to Daryl? How fucking <laughs> random is that? Especially because Lala deleted the video. I deleted it after like seven minutes. Cause she was like, eh, maybe I shouldn't have this up. Well, I didn't want to give Daryl a chaotic day. Yeah. But unfortunately, during that time, any Bravo person that was posting before someone clicked on it, screen record. Yeah. Thank God they did, though. Thank God. Thank God. Because send it to Daryl just hits different. I've got a little baby to take care of. I got a baby to take care of. And I appreciate all of you who are buying send it to Daryl <laughs> from Lala Kent and not Etsy. Uh, Etsy? Dude, 
Well, yeah. well, lucky for all of you who may be like, well, I went over to Etsy because I wanted more options. Well, now, if you go to shoplalaken.com, the fucking options we that Lala has for you, Auburn dye hoodie, get it before it's sold out because I got it and I'm fucking obsessed. I'm wearing it. So yeah. today is Wednesday. I'm going to go down to Newport with Sheena and we're going to watch the episode. Did the you, reunion, and yes. I'm going to wear that hoodie, the send it to Daryl tie-dye hoodie. So I appreciated the the Schwartz and Ariana conversation. I love when a woman draws a line in the sand. There's nothing I love more than a woman saying, you choose me or you're over there. Mm-hmm. And I obviously related to that yeah. because it's so funny how Schwartz started the season with me saying that to, he- to him and ended the season with Ariana saying that to him. And if that's not a clear picture of the universe saying to you, hi, we're letting you know like you can be on the right side of things. We're giving in less than a, than a year. We have given you two times to choose the right option. Choose good. If you, at this point in time, still go the other way, you're a lost cause. So I was digging it. I dug the whole episode. It was fantastic television. It was dark as it fucking gets. And I'm excited for tonight because it'll lighten the mood a bit. I do want to say I wore this dress. I want to post this on Instagram on the podcast page. I wore the, the red dress cutout dress to Lisa Vanderpump's uh, Vanderpump Dogs Gala. Mm -hmm. So that was one of my options for the reunion. They obviously told me no because they were going to, Ariana was going to wear her red cutout dress and this was her moment. And I was like, great, perfect. Put me in whatever other option you decide to pick from what I sent you. Mm -hmm. So my red dress that I wore to the gala was indeed not only my first choice, but their first choice. Yes. But when it comes down to it, okay, two red dresses that are cut out, who do you think is going to get it? Right. And Ariana it looked stunning. I mean, the Ariana's revenge dress, stunning. Lala's fucking glitter sparkle on the dog gala carpet, stunning. You guys killed it. Ariana was hitting different in that dress. But, but I mean, both of you, that red dress looked like it was made for your body. Did you have a nip slip? Ever? No, Mm -hmm. never had a nip slip. Amazing. Never had a nip slip. But I said, because I was going to wear it to MTV Awards, Mm. they moved that to Zoom so I couldn't wear it. I said, if I don't wear it to the dog gala, it is officially not supposed to be worn by me. Right. So I got to wear it. It was stunning. Fire emoji, fire emoji. Fire emojis. All right, my loves, I'm headed to Disneyland. Got to go swoop. Oh, Sheena's already left, so I have to hurry my little ass off. Enjoy the episode tonight. I love y'all, and I will catch you next week. Dissecting politics with exclusive interviews, commentary, and humor. Useful Idiots with Katie Halper and Aaron Mate. I really don't like sharks, and I think we live in a very shark world. Quote, one thing to keep in mind is sharks are not out there trying to eat surfers and swimmers. They'd much rather eat fish, but in many cases, they mistake us for their actual prey. When they do bite, they usually move on. That's supposed to make us feel better? Useful Idiots, wherever you listen. 